entrepreneur, founder, investor, and innovator with over 30 years experience in various industries, including fintech, automotive, education, and precious metals recycling. Justin Linney is with us today to talk about his experience in founding Everarty Automotive Limited. How are you today, Justin? Yeah, very good, thank you. Very good, David. Uh, lovely to see you. Lovely to be here, lovely to talk to you. Yeah, well, put, firstly, thank you ever so much for taking the time out of your day to come on to the, the, you know, the, the, the podcast and share your story with us. It would be a great way to kick us off if you could just you know, give us a bit more information about what it is that you guys do and what sort of services you offer and what it is you're all about. Yeah, certainly. Thanks, David. So um, I guess in a nutshell, we create EVs for people who uh, love cars and um, the two don't always go together um, in, in essence. So really, we are creating very high end bespoke cars. They're all hand built. Um, they just happen to have the very latest electric powertrains um, as we as we rebuild them into into a vehicle. And what that really means is that people get the the unique experience of driving something that was actually you know designed maybe in the you know right from the sixties through to the to the nineties with that steering feel that you know the, the original feel of the nine eleven when it comes to weight distribution as an example, but with modern technology and something that won't let you down when you, you when you take it to lunch. So so in essence that's what, that's our core business. Um, and then underlying that of course we're an EV technology integrator. So we use the very, very best in fast motors, batteries, technology really, uh, which is also my background, um, to to ensure that, that car is something that is really enjoyable into the future. So I imagine there's quite a lot of um, quite a lot of change going in the battery technology going on at the moment and things like that. So, so just before we get stuck into that, so so do you get somebody who's like rock up with a car and sort of say, "I want you to convert this," or do you build the whole thing from scratch? How do you actually? So we, yeah, we we um. So there are there is a, a whole market out there that are uh, everybody from somebody under the arches somewhere that has you know managed to get hold of some used parts right the way through to the kind of things that we do. So. We do everything, you know, we have um, specific models that we offer. And the okay. reason we do it that way is that in all of our models is probably three to 5,000 hours worth of engineering just on the EV powertrain wow. to get that powertrain right for that specific model. And then we replicate. So in essence, um, you're looking at really a, uh, a very you know, fairly detailed process of, of, of engineering that goes into designing and building that powertrain and that that's that's then integrated into a into a vehicle um so it's it's not for everybody having said that we then have a bespoke process where we are literally taking uh, i'll give you one example um a very high-end lamborghini 4x4 from the 80s which most people don't even realize existed okay um, and that's a many hundreds of thousands of pound engineering job and that will be the only one in the world so so essentially it's either our replicable products that um, are the likes of our Land Rover series, the Porsche 911 that we do, um, Mercedes Pagoda that we launched recently, uh, and a couple of other models. And then, as I say, a bespoke program that is not for the faint-hearted when it comes to cost, but it is creating you know the only one in the world, which is quite an exciting proposition. A truly unique product. So how did you get into this? So um, I am a recovering petrol head, um, I think it's okay. fair to say. Um, so I, um, I have, my career has been in technology principally, um, and I, 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 I've also built and sold a couple of businesses, you know, in the technology and, and sort of financial services space. My means to an end was always buying the next car or watch, quite frankly. So I've, I've always been into cars and watches uh, for various reasons. Um, but in, in essence, um, during the sort of mid i guess 20, 2016 to 2018 time period i'd sold two of my businesses and, and really was looking for something else to do um i wasn't ready to retire um and started looking at clean tech and you know what was happening in in the world of um uh, sustainability and um i happened to see harry and megan drive away from windsor castle in what was then a one-off you know million pound plus prototype electric e-type yeah um, but also at the same time my daughter who is turning uh, 14 this year, started worrying about sustainability and climate change. Um, and I thought, well, if I can match my passion for cars and technology and do something in a way that hopefully is uh, improving air quality and the environment going forward, then, then that's something I'd like to do. So that, that henceforth, here, here we are, really. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. Makes absolute sense. So you've had this experience of building businesses and then selling them, and then you founded this one. What was it, around 2019? 
Yeah, exactly. So um, I I found my first. So I'd been in tech and, and working for big, big tech. So people like okay. Packard, um, SAP, um, and Accenture, Microsoft, Joint Ventures. So big, you know, big, um, uh, I guess, big tech companies. Um, and started work, working in and around startups um, in the early 2000s um, and got a lot of sort of startup experience, principally for other people. Um, yeah. And then in 2006, set up my own business with a, you know, with a friend. That turned into an FCA regulated payments business, which we sold to Club Equity. Uh, we also set up a, 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 an FCA regulated lending business, which again sold to a different Club Equity. Um, uh, and I've done various other things along the way. I think this is my seventh or eighth startup um, that I've been involved in. So um, yeah, as, as we know, startups aren't for faint hearted either, um, mm -hmm. but actually uh, I really enjoy the buzz. And, and obviously what we're creating is, is really quite emotive. And, yeah, we're, we're building cars for true thought leaders in sustainability and technology. Um, most of our clients today, for example, are you know in, in the US. So it might be individuals such as the car, um, which is behind me in my you know in, in the web conference today, which is built for a guy called Matt Rogers, who is the founder of Nest, uh, which is bought by Google as, as Google mm -hmm. Nest. So that kind of individual who is top of the game when it comes to technology and sustainability. They happen to love cars, and therefore, what we create for them is is really exciting. Really cool. So, what you know, you've had various experiences in business. What would you say your biggest learnings have been over the years as a business owner? Uh, I think first thing is things always take longer than you hope and expect. So, when it yeah, comes absolutely. to uh, anything to do with building technology, when it comes to um, uh, raising money, when it comes to the things that you you, you always want to sort of expect tomorrow, will, will, will no doubt take a lot longer. Um, the, the interesting thing about what we're doing today, of course, in cars is that there's always a race day. So whether it is a delivery for a client, whether it is a an event that we're, we're planning for or something else, that always is, therefore, we get all hands on deck. So you know, we're, we're only a small team, we're only uh, sort of 20 people, but yeah. everybody gets involved to try and make that happen, which, um, you know, is, is quite a challenge sometimes, but, but it makes it fun when you achieve it as well. So, but yeah, I would, I would say the big, big thing is things always take longer. Uh, and are far more complicated than you first plan for. Yeah, it does take longer. A lot, a, a lot of the time, you sort of underestimate how much you can actually achieve, or you overestimate how much you think you can achieve in a year, but underestimate actually how much you can achieve in a day if you really put your mind to right. it. But yeah, mindset wise. So when, when you when you started these businesses, did you start them with a view to sell them in, at the outset, or was that something that sort of just happened in the journey? Um, so. Uh, I would I would always say selling them was uh, was was in in you know in my mind, but not necessarily you know uh, you, you clearly have to prove yourself as a business and, and mm. become a viable business by definition. Um, and look, not all, all businesses I think are right for sale. Actually, that you know, there's there's a family potentially around them or, or legacy around them. Um, I think what we're doing is building a business that is um, is both relevant for consumers but also relevant for B two B, and that that has a different um, spin on it and it really does mean that the capital involved that we need to grow this business is is far larger than potentially if we were just in one of those markets but mm -hmm. give you an example you know we are we're building extremely high um high-end powertrains so the full powertrain for, for vehicles that's relevant both for our vehicles but also um we're, we're we're effectively offering that out to third parties and that might be building a brand new supercar in, in the UAE through to um, four by fours in Singapore through to, you know, supercars in, in, in California. So that, as you can imagine, costs a fair amount of money, not, not least in, in travel and, and, and the team that goes behind yeah. that. But so what I would say in terms of, of, of selling or at least um, capital raising is by definition, investors want a return. And therefore, yeah, the, the way you achieve that is hopefully you either a growing it so that is significant dividends, which isn't always you know possible in a, certain time frame or you, you obviously have to then think about other ways of people getting their money back and that work may well be selling or or getting people like private or VCs involved. Yeah. Okay. So finances are absolutely crucial to the to, to the business and the growth and things. So what sort of advice would you give to business owners out there regarding financial management and raising extra funds? Yeah, I mean financial management is critical obviously. And I think um, you know, there are people in our space, for example, that um you know, having business experience is is, uh, is critical, but not always possible by definition, depending on, on yeah. people's um, experience. But I think 
you know, again, having the right people around you, the right accountants, the right advisors, the people that um, are saying to you, is that really the right way to spend this money? Or, 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 you know, is there another way of achieving something? And then again, when it comes to investment, I think it's all about, yes, of course, what you can deliver and what you can preview you can deliver, but it's also about the story. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, people need to believe in a vision. And I think that actually is, is as important as anything. Um, and of course, I, I would say fundraising takes an awful lot of time. Um, and, and don't be surprised if it takes, you know, twice or three times longer than you expect, especially when you've got little things like COVID and, uh, and, and various wars globally that, um, that slow people down when it comes to making investment decisions. Uh, you're right and it's quite often a case where actually where you, you you know to raise funds when you don't need it is a good time to do it rather than waiting until you need it because it t- does take twice as long as you think it's going to take and when you when you need it it's kind of it's harder to get it as well isn't it that's right yeah completely agree and look and, and look, it's a great thing again about you know for us the kind of business we're growing here and scaling is it's relevant to a lot of different markets so you know, again, there might be companies out there that it's just their local market they're serving, and that's and that's great. And hopefully, there's local kind of um, investors or investment groups that are, are there for able to help. Uh, others where you know we've had conversations as as far east as as China um, via UAE, Saudi, and and right the way clearly yeah. the USA. So so actually, it really does depend on on your market and and yeah. where where that's relevant as well. Yeah, absolutely. So you say you've got about 20 in the team. So a nice, mm. a nice size team, nice and nimble yeah. to, to react to deadlines and like you say, the race that's the race that's upon you. What mm. sort of qualities do you look for in the team and how do you how do you keep that that engagement and that motivation going to to achieve yeah. those quick deadlines? So I think that it's every business is <clears throat> is all about the people, you know, it's the people that make the business, but also how those people interact with clients of that business for obvious reasons and I think yeah. those two qualities um a personal skills are really really important and I think um as as I look at some of the younger generation um seeing those that can interact that can talk to people that can hold a phone conversation um is unfortunately being lost in certain areas I think teaching people to to, to do that and being able to communicate effectively is really really key yeah. um but also just a, a can do and you know can do attitude and get getting things done. You know, things don't always work to plan. Things, you know, if you if you want to go home at five o'clock but they still work until six, seven o'clock, that's life. Um, but actually hopefully the rewards are worthwhile at the end of it in terms of um customer satisfaction and delight, but also building, you know, building a team and a business that people are proud to be involved in. Yeah, it's a it's a really exciting proposition that you offer. How many projects do you normally do you normally have on the go at any one time? So it's not necessarily project related per se. I and mean, I think right okay. now we've got about 20 cars in build. Um, but we also manage those globally. So for example, all our Porsches um are built in Irvine, California. Yeah, uh, we're now starting to build cars in Dubai. So so actually we've got a small team, but they're very effective because we work with very specific partners internationally. Um versus i think we've probably got about 15 or 18 different b2b projects that we're you know we're working through at the moment so again um a lot of skills a lot of time zones we're trying to deal with um one of my team members was on a call uh you know five i think 5 a.m the other day with china and california um and dubai you know and again we we happen to have daylight you know some of the people on that uh, team definitely didn't but again just managing that is uh is is sometimes a challenge but again that excites people as well being involved in those sorts of projects um uh, and the meaningful output of that which would be an amazing new ev that um yeah will come into the world but again it's, it's quite emotive if you're into cars it's quite an exciting place to be gets into your blood doesn't it the sort of automotive yeah. industry cars and things like that you, you said at the beginning you're a real petrol head <clears throat> so where do you see the electric vehicle sort of um Ah, oh, what's the right word for it? Not not revolution, but where do you see it going? Because there's obviously a lot of questions around electric vehicles, whether it is the long term long term um, solution. What what's your yeah. view? So, so to say, I'm, a, I'm a recovering petrol head, so I've had a lot, okay, sorry, recovering. lot of, uh, of non EVs in in my history, and I suppose yeah. what I would say is where do I see it? Like, I think um, you know, unfortunately, in the UK um, governments have not helped. You know. Um, 
there is a there is a tidal wave of EVs coming to this market, and unfortunately, it will kill off uh, a lot of UK um, uh, and European and just big auto companies. That, you know, they haven't mm -hmm. uh, necessarily seen this coming. Um, what I would say is, personally, I have driven an EV now for um, coming up for four years, uh, three and a half years as my daily car. Uh, I think in that time I've done 60 odd thousand miles. Okay. Um, I'm very fortunate. I have charging at home, so you know, driveway and charging. Um, and because of that, in 60 odd thousand miles, I've only charged away from home eight times. So wow. I've charged eight times for 60,000 miles. Every other time it's at night when I'm asleep and you know, every morning I've got 230, 240 odd miles uh, range on my car. So for me, there's just no combustion engine car. I mean, I'm again fortunate. I, I drive a very fast electric Porsche. Um, yeah. There's virtually no combustion cars on the road that can, you know, can give me that level of, of, of satisfaction and ease of use. Um, but there's lots of people who still haven't seen it, you know. And there's lots of people out there um, bemoaning, you know, EVs coming. Um, what they forget is that well, most of them haven't driven one. Number one. Yeah. Um, and number two, what they forget is big oil. Unfortunately, you know, you've got to remember that. 20% of all deaths globally are caused by combustion emissions. And, and you can't all right, okay. that, you know, it's, it's, it's a hidden fact. Um, yeah. uh, you know, and so, so what we're trying to do is then create that opportunity for people to still really, really enjoy some in, incredible cars, incredible driving experiences, but something that's no longer emitting. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a load of fun. Yeah, it don't have to be boring, do they? And notwithstanding, of course, you can wait. You get the opportunity to wake up every morning with a full tank of of electric, right. and, yeah. and yeah. never have to go to a petrol station ever again. Precisely, yeah. And I, and I genuinely, I <laughs> test them. Um, so if I have to go to a petrol station, it's because I need some air in the tires. So, uh, yeah. but outside of that, that's that's about it. Yeah, very good. Listen, it's really interesting. You know, there's a there's a there's a great. I think there's a great opportunity for what you're doing because there is that real emotive and emotion around sports cars, performance cars and things like that. So to keep them keep them sort of living and still relevant and up to date is fantastic. Where 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 can our listeners go to find out a little bit more about what you guys are working on and, and find out a bit more information about you? Yeah, well, as you know, we're, we're in Oxfordshire, so we're always, always happy to chat to people. And, and if people want to come and, come and see us, they're very welcome to. Um, we're very fortunate. We we go to some of the greatest shows in the world. So you know we'll be at uh, we'll be at Pebble Beach Car Show in California. So people have to be there. Um, in August we'll be at um, Concord of Elegance in Hampton Court in September. Uh, we'll be at Monaco Yacht Show. So these aren't uh, you know these aren't um, sort of necessarily the run of the mill events, but they are really great events to be at. Yeah. Um, and then you know we're always open. You know if people want to come and see us uh, online, at Everati uh dot com but also our instagram and, and, and our youtube channel but but in essence i would say is that if, if people are on on the fence or thinking about an ev um it's just worth looking you know what we do and kind of the experiences that we give people because i think that's the key thing which is um to lots of people a car is a means of transport it's an a to b and and possibly you know that and that market is, is growing all the time and again i liken i like an ev market to a tidal wave it, it kind of goes out a bit and then it goes back in, and then all of a sudden it will be everywhere um so so again we're creating people cars for people who love um love cars but also are on that ev journey already um and i think yeah just come and have a look and see what's possible really sounds good justin again thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy day to join us really appreciate it Sounds like a fascinating product that you've got. Looking forward to seeing what developments you've got over the coming years. Thank you, David. Love to chat to you. Take care. And you. Bye-bye.